It's that time of year, the uh, beginning of the year, where I can make old proclamations about all the things that we can look forward to for the next 12 months. The time of year where I can look into this crystal ball or whatever I decided to add in editing and say, this is probably maybe possibly gonna happen in the next year, though I'm not very certain about it. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on both established MMOs and crowdfunded MMOs, talking about some rumors and then some stories of 2021 and then what I expect to happen in the new year with some of these games and what I'm really hopeful for. So let's get right into it. I'll add chapters to this to make it a lot easier for you later in the year so you can rub it in my face when I get all this stuff wrong. MMO predictions 2021. Stop. Uh, 2022. Do you? So the things that I'm certain are going to happen First, we'll start with my personal favorite MMO of all time, at least up until now, EverQuest and its sibling EverQuest 2. They're going to have expansions. I think this is pretty much a guarantee because we've had expansions every year for a long time now for both of these games, and I don't foresee them stopping. We've had very strong numbers for these games, as old as they are, uh, reported by EG7, not to mention the upgrade to the 64-bit client for EverQuest, which is currently in testing. So I don't see either of these games going anywhere soon. The only possibility here that would be interesting to see is, do we see a difference in the expansions for EverQuest with the, the change to the 64-bit client. Do we see something new? It, it'll be interesting to see by the end of the year what EverQuest and EverQuest 2 have done, but I'm expecting a lot more of the same, if I'm gonna be totally honest, partially because of their noticeable absence from the most recent EG7 investor document. Next is gonna be Guild Wars 2 expansion. I mean, this is obvious, right? I don't, I don't know that there could be a much more obvious one. We like we have a loose date for this February 2022. You can pre-purchase the upcoming expansion right now, and it looks like it's going to be an interesting and good expansion. I think in a lot of ways, this may be Guild Wars 2's year to, to lose. I mean, it's it's one of those years where I think Guild Wars 2 can really continue to establish itself as the go to game for people that do not want to pay a subscription fee. And perhaps even more secure than Guild Wars 2 is going to be the launch of Lost Ark, which is scheduled for February 11th of 2022. This game is one that I wasn't as into as I kind of expected. Perhaps I had gotten too in, too much into the hype over the last couple of years, but I may be one of a, only a few that feel that way because the reviews that came out were pretty strong for the Lost Ark beta that happened not too long ago. I may even be willing to give it another shot when it does release and see if it fits my playstyle a little bit more. This is definitely not any kind of MMO that I would play hardcore. It would be a casual game at best, but we'll just have to see how it goes. And one of the things that's going to be interesting to me to see, will this meet the same peak that New World did? And I don't know that it will. As strong of a game it is, I don't think it's going to have that lead in that New World did being a Western developed MMO for the first time. Brand new game. Lost Ark has been around. It's been out for th three years. Now it could, it could very well by the end of the year have more players than New World, but I think asking for close to a million players is a lot to ask for a launch. And this next one may be a bit of a cheat because we already have quite a bit of information on it. I expect the Elder Scrolls Online to continue its themed year long pattern of chapter and DLC. We already have a reveal video and it looks like it's gonna be a Breton themed year, perhaps taking place in the high Isles, but we won't have to wait long to see exactly what it is as more details are going to be going live on January 27th when we'll have the global reveal. So stay tuned for that. This is one of those MMOs I feel like I've sunk a lot of time into, but know very little about. Perhaps I need to revisit it in 2022. That said, this game continues to stand above a lot of other games and it may have one of the best free to play models that I've seen, balancing a very rewarding free to play with a strong incentive to pay the subscription fee, not just the crafting bag, but also getting all the DLC included with your subscription fee. 
let alone the uh, the shop that you get as well. But I think this will be one of those expansions that hopefully continues to excite and reward the Tamriel faithful with another year of good content that is spread out across the year. Legacy of Sith will also be launching in February, on February 15th, 2022. So I guess I guess a lot of the uh, the big MMOs, the big established MMOs have picked the second month of the year to really, really lay it on thick. So Legacy of the Sith, I, I expect to kind of breathe, continue to breathe life into a game that I had honestly written off probably sooner than I should have. I, I kind of felt like this game was done years ago, especially when it went free to play and gave us one of the most hard free to play models I've seen. I, I mean, pay to play PVP? Why? Why? But anyway, that's beside the point. It, it does. This game does have a very strong single player story. It continues to long after the fact. And I think it's like the the sci fi cousin of Final Fantasy 14 when it comes to story. It's just kind of a shame that the rest of the game doesn't really measure up to its competition in some ways. But I still think this game has a lot to offer. And if you like Star Wars, you're going to enjoy it, I'm sure. Another company and its once mighty MMO will continue to thrash around in the dumpster fire it's put itself in. And that's that's about it for my things that I am quite certain of for this year. So then we move on to the things that might happen. This is the section where I think I'd be more surprised if they didn't happen than if they did, but I'm not guaranteeing they will happen. For uh, First is going to be that Final Fantasy 14 will upgrade their servers. This is, I think this is one of the few things about that game that continues to irk me because it's not like this is a new problem, although it may seem like a new problem to a lot of people. I can't remember a game that has had the need to continuously close off new character creation as, as frequently as Final Fantasy XIV. This has been years of this kind of issue with server load and i have to wonder if they had been a little more optimistic about their own performance if we wouldn't currently be having these insane issues where you have the game company actually stopping digital sales of their game because their servers just can't handle anymore and they want to at least keep those players that are enjoying the game happy which props to square enix on that because making that sacrifice of box sales to maintain the somewhat happiness of your current player base is admirable almost as admirable as the amazing story of how this game came to be how it went from this this kind of pretty but garbage game to the game it is today. I remember logging in and and playing Final Fantasy A Realm Yet Born and just thinking, God, this game has such amazing graphics, but it's also a piece of shit. And then seeing what they did and how they pulled it back into development and not only that, but created lore reasons for it and made this entirely new game built on the skeleton of the old game. It will remain, I think, one of those stories in MMO history that just stands out for the reward for taking a risk on a game that essentially failed. The next thing I believe that Lord of the Rings Online will officially announce either their console move or the revamp to their graphics. I don't, and when I say announce, we've already, we already know that it's in the plans, right? We have investor letters that have leaked this information, but we don't have an official announcement from Standing Stone Games or anyone else regarding this. This is really just like, well, the rumors out there and we don't have any way to stop it, but they have not fully addressed it either. So I think that this year may be the year where we get some kind of buzz built around this happening because because we already have roughly what they think the time frame will be. And if we're not getting close enough to it now to start talking about it, at least announcing that it's coming, then we may be looking at pushing that date, which I think may ruin some of that interest that could be driven to the game from the upcoming Lord of the Rings series by Amazon. The game stands upon the edge of a knife stray but a little, and it will fail to the ruin of all. Yet hope remains while the company is true. Mortal Online 2 is actually supposed to be launching this month in January. And so you might think, oh, well, that's that's this month. So why shouldn't that be in the 
certain column. Well, the reason why I say that is because this game is less established. It's going to have a much more niche player base than some of the bigger, more established games because it is a hardcore PvP MMO. And I think that they have a bit more wiggle room when it comes to delays. They have already delayed it once. And I don't think that that player base that is super excited and really wants to get into this game would care if it's delayed a month or two months. Third little part here is going to be the game the the things that i'm hopeful will happen again this is not saying like the this is going to be more on the if if they don't i won't be super shocked i'll just be a little sad starting with my personal favorite crowdfunded mmo which should not be surprising to anyone who's watched any of my content before but pantheon rise of the fallen will show more than tell this year. And I say this because we have that specific quote from Joppa. I believe that this is the time when Pantheon will take all the groundwork they laid in 2021 and really start to show us how that has made progress for the game, show the elements that are coming together, how everything's working, how all that time, all that extra work that they did was worth it. Now, this could be in a few different ways. It could be in the form of streams. It could be in the form of class reveals. It could be in the form of videos like the intro to Fairthale, which really that was probably one of my favorite Pantheon videos of all time. It, it just like elicited feelings, the the, the music, the ground. You know what? Here, let's let's watch it real quick. I mean, if that doesn't make you want to jump into the game, I don't I don't know what does. On the other side of that is I think Ashes of Creation may delay some of their testing. The persistent alpha testing, I think, is going to be pushed back a little bit by their move to Unreal Engine 5. I think this was the right move for them to make, but it all may also add some extra work that they have to get done before they can go back to kind of the, the processes that they were working on before. We had the disaster about the of the Battle Royale game that we shall not go into any further, but this is also a game that I think will benefit in the long run from taking this approach, from taking a steady approach from their art style and everything that they're trying to do. Unreal Engine 5 is probably the best thing they could do, even if it causes a bit of a delay. This next one, some of you may not have ever heard of. Some of you may not have even heard of its predecessor name, but Embers Adrift, I believe, will continue their rebrand. Embers Adrift is the new game being built on top of Saga of Lucimia. I, I don't want this to be taken as insulting towards this game because I am genuinely interested in it and I will be probably circling back to this this game in in 2022 to see what it's all about, learn a little bit more about it. But when I remember looking at it and delving into it when it was Saga of Lucimia, the way that I felt about it was a less ambitious version of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen because it is a game that is focused on social interacting and grouping and difficulty and reward. That's kind of where my mind went. Like I said, I really do need to do a bit more research on this game, so please don't take that as an insult. I am genuinely interested in it. With We had these some, some great trailers released for this game. They've started to do some live streams. I think that this is the year where we start to see the rebrand of Embers Adrift really taking, taking hold. And finally, the things that probably won't happen. Star Citizen, that's it's not launching. <laughs> watch this be this. This is my first prediction and watch this be the time that yeah, I'm completely wrong in Star Citizen launches. You know what? That would be fine. That would be I would be happy to be wrong on that because I think that as much as this game has kind of dominated the thoughts of everyone who's ever heard of a Kickstarter or crowdfunded MMO, the fact that it hasn't launched yet and with how much money it's made, how much press it has gotten, they have freaking Mark Hamill for Squadron 42. I mean, with everything that they've done and still not been able to launch, I think that it kind of hangs as a weight around every other crowdfunded game because whenever you bring up a crowdfunded game, 
Star Citizen is is lurking there in the comments. Yeah, it'll launch when Star Citizen launch. I bet there'll be some in, on the comments on this video about some of the other Kickstarter MMOs I've talked about here. But yes, I don't think it's going to be launching. That's that's the the, the short of the long. This one kind of hurts a little bit to talk about because I actually backed this game. It wasn't exactly expensive backing, but Legend of Aria. Legends of Aria was a kind of a game that I enjoyed for a bit. It felt like a little bit like an Ultima Online clone that probably could have been made in 2001 instead of, you know, 2020. But it was still a decent game. It felt like it suffered a bit from lack of content. They had little pockets of content, but then there was these big gaps, big areas where there was just nothing, presumably to add player housing. It was a game that didn't hit the mark. And I think that shows when they sold themselves to a company, Blue Monster Games, that considers itself a NFT metaverse company. The next is another crowdfunded MMO that did launch, but not to the way that they had hoped for or anticipated Crowfall. Crowfall was, you know, it, it launched. It was probably one of the those games that a lot of people thought would never launch, but it's also one that perhaps never had never had the following that they may have hoped for or expected. Definitely not hoped for because they have sold the game. This game was never Shadowbane 2.0, despite that involvement of Mark Jacobs, but it was still it was still a fun game. It had an interesting art style, it had fun classes and races. It had some really unique and interesting things. I just think it lacked some of the the heft that was needed to make it a very successful MMO. And I think that focus on PvP and making it almost feel in some ways like a lobby based seasonal M PvP. I don't know. It was it was an ambitious thing that hasn't really worked out. And with the new purchase, I don't think we're going to see many updates on the game. And if we do see updates, I'm a little scared of what the content will be because I have a feeling that any updates for Crowfall this year are going to be negative. And the last is just going to be about the Marvel MMO. I don't think we're getting an announcement on that at all. <laughs> If I bet on anything from EG7 this year, it's going to be the Lord of the Rings announcement because of the series that's coming out. I don't see anything coming about that Marvel MMO this year and probably not even in 2023, maybe not even in 2024. I don't think we have to worry about the Marvel MMO until phase five of the MCU. I think I think you're you're good to let that 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 announcement just kind of fade off into the background of your memory and come back to it when you're older. My name is Redbeard Flynn. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you found it helpful, please leave a like down below and a comment on what you are expecting. I would like to know your predictions for 2022. Did they, are they different from my own? Are there some similarities? What do you think? And are you excited to tell me how wrong I am in December of 2022? Look forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.